I was working for a friend uh, who is the person that really got me to come to Nigeria. Um, a guy called Jason Njoko. Um, yeah, he ran a Iroko TV. Um, at the time, it was called Nollywood Love, uh, which was just a YouTube channel. Um, they raised in venture capital. Uh, I was working at IBM at the time as the uh, head of a marketing division for digital marketing, uh, the head of agency division. And then I came to join the business, um, working in the London office, managing the London office. Uh, and as, as part of the, the director of marketing, it was about subscription and increasing subscriptions. And then there lies my first challenge of, of the introduction to challenges in Nigeria. Payments was a big issue. And payments now is, is you have so many different options for payments from the likes of Paystack, uh, Flutterwave, um, so on and so forth. But that, that didn't exist then. So it was to come to Nigeria to try and work out how to improve the payment aspects of the descriptions because that's where we were losing a lot of people on the resubscription, the reoccurring subscriptions um, because there was no direct debit then and so on and so forth. And then Jason got married to uh, Mary. Uh, who was Mary Remy at the time. Um, and so obviously I was one of the, the, the groomsmen um, and being the party animal amongst the groomsmen, I was uh, told to buy the drinks as I did in London. I organized everything, which was easy. You know, you went to Bristol, had a party, went out with this so straightforward, go to uh, Majestic Wines, buy everything you need to buy. That was the end of it. In Nigeria, uh, it was a different story where you asked various people where to get the drinks and everybody either had a guy that they could call or they said you just go to the market. So I didn't want to call a guy because I was very untrusting of the society then. Um, like I don't know what the guy would bring, I don't know who the guy is. And, and I didn't understand why everybody had to have a guy. Why can't you just go somewhere and get what you need to get? Um, so I went to the informal sector. So I went to the market, which is okay, Ari, And um, it was a very interesting experience, but you know, I just couldn't understand why in 2013, people had to go to such an environment to buy something as, as easy, but also as sophisticated um, and luxurious as alcohol. I mean, you're selling, uh, as to, at today's market, um, you're selling a single bottle of alcohol that can go as, as high up as a uh, one million naira uh, or more, you know, a, a bottle of uh, Remy Martin Louis Thirteenth is like 1.4 million naira. And I have to go to an environment as dirty, hot, um, uncomfortable as that to buy it, uh, you know, it, it just didn't make sense to me. So uh, that was where the idea was born that, look, we can do better than this. Like Nigeria can do better than this. We can do better than this. So let's just do better than this. Uh, and that was where the journey began. The initial vision was uh, obviously at the time there was a, a, a internet boom. Um, so our vision at the time initially started at being an online business, which we thought would be, you know, be the Amazon for drinks of Africa and would take the industry by storm um, and would be the next biggest boys in the country and make loads of money. And, and that was the vision and that quickly got crushed uh, and then the reality set in. Um, but it, but it, it was still a very enjoyable reality in the sense that, look, you forget the, the country you're trying to come into doesn't have a plug and play infrastructure infrastructure so it's set up uh, there's no logistics infrastructure set up there's bad roads there's no air uh, uh, travel set up properly for logistics it's expensive um, and one of the things that makes e-commerce uh, really successful is cheap efficient logistics which is something we still struggle with till today you also don't bargain for how competitive the informal sector can be simply because of their lack of investment, they are able to just be more cost efficient. And in a third world country like Nigeria, regardless of how big, or I don't want to say big, but, but the, the size of the, the, the elite um, is, is, is attractive, but it's still small enough um, that a lot of people are still led by price rather than convenience. So it, it completely turned the heads on its shoulder uh, with regards to what makes an e-commerce business successful um, in the rest of the world compared to Nigeria and what is attractive and important to the consumer in the West, to the consumer in Africa. In, in the West, um, um, a man of my position or your position, um, you would be cash rich, 
but you'd be time poor. So price efficiency is not too much of a problem for you, but time efficiency and convenience is of more importance to you. Whereas in Nigeria, it's the complete opposite. We are time rich and generally cash poor. So efficiency and convenience is secondary. The price is primary. Uh, and because you have a larger pool of people who are price sensitive, that attitude goes all the way up to the top to the elite. There are a few people that still, uh, you know, appreciate efficiency, but then from an e-commerce point of view, you're competing with a lot of other factors. So in the UK, I don't have time to book a plane ticket to go, to go anywhere. I don't have time to go pick up food. I don't have time to do shopping. I just don't have the time. But in Nigeria, even if I don't have the time, I can send my domestic staff, I can send my driver, I can send uh, my staff members, I can send my family members. There's too many people to do the job for you that even with e-commerce making you do it yourself, it's still an inefficient approach to doing things. So um, that, that they posed one of the first challenges that we realized with e-commerce. Um, and, and that's not to say there isn't enough people that still do find um, doing it themselves efficient, especially from a trust point of view. Um, but there are other aspects that need to be in play um, to capture the larger pool of the market. We're, we're still at a stage in Nigeria where see, feel, touch is, is still very relevant, it's still very important. Um, physical experiences like what we've built here are still very new to them. In the West, there's not much you want to show them that they haven't seen already. So they're not bothered about seeing all of that. They're more interested about saving their time so they can get their life moving. So that made us adjust uh, with a lot of things and change our vision and our approach to the, to the industry and to the business. We are moving with the vision. Um, uh, not as fast as I, I would like. Um, but I'm grateful for how far we've gotten. I'm grateful to the industry we're in, how much uh, they've supported and how much they uh, believe in what we're trying to do. I, I, I would say, you know, we're not the, the biggest players in the industry yet, uh, but we are 100% the, the ones that invest the most. Uh, definitely the, the more, most forward thinking. Um, definitely the ones that are the most daring and trying things and doing things more than anybody else. Uh, we are definitely pioneers in a lot of things in this industry. And I, and I don't say that with arrogance. Uh, it's more when I look at what we've done and I see, you know, they say uh, 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 Im imitation is the, the greatest compliment. Um, and, you know, we see what not just the people in the industry do, um, that copy us but it's also the industry themselves have taken a lot of ideas that we have brought about and they've replicated them in the industry so we know that they that shows that they have belief in us and we appreciate that we, we don't take it for granted or arrogance at all but at least lets us know where we're heading in the right direction of the vision um, we need to pull our socks up get faster uh, stay ahead uh, stay thinking um, and most importantly always stay humble about it because you know, the next idea is just around the corner um, uh, and the next competitor is just around the corner. So this is our, our Ideal Adeco store. Um, it's our flagship store, the, the first of its kind in Africa. And to be fair, you Nigerians should be kind of proud. This is probably the best liquor store in Africa. And I've been around Africa, South Africa, North Africa, West Africa, East. And I'm not seeing anything better than what we've managed to achieve here. So just as a, as a nation, we should be happy what we've done and we've set the trends and the milestones for the rest of the continent to keep following us because a lot of other people have duplicated what we've done here. I'm happy that they've duplicated it. Um, I want more people to duplicate it because all it will ever do is uplift the whole industry and make people or force some people to invest in the industry because what we currently have is not good enough. And as Nigerians, we deserve better than the mediocrity that is given to us. Our primary business is is not just uh, about this physical store, we're an omni-channel business, but we work with a lot of brands as you can see. You've got Monkey Shoulder here who got this unique stand. We sell everything from whiskey to champagne to wine um, to, uh, what, to liquors to brandy, cognac, um, and we work with all the biggest brands in the industry. So you've got here Wild Turkey, you've got Johnny Walker who have a great unique stand. 
Uh, this is one of the most unique products in the industry today, um, which is really great. Blue label, Johnny Walker Rare and Blue. Uh, then you've got Jack Daniels, who's got a great range. And then one of the fastest moving products in the industry at the moment, you've got uh, Jameson, um, who have a really unique stand here. You can see they use pallets to make it. So you see the brands took this very seriously with the level of creativity that they have. Um, you can see some of the artistic uh, stuff that they've done here with Glen Morangi, which is a single malt. Uh, then you've got Glen Livet, which is one of the, one of the great uh, single malts you have. And then obviously one of the fastest moving products in the industry still, you've got um, Glen Fiddick. Um, the store, as you can see, has a lot of uh, other brands around and a whole host of brands everywhere. Um, and they're all categorized uh, very uniquely. And you can see how neat and clean the, the environment is. What I'll do is uh, I'll take you around a bit more, but some of the other services that we offer is you've got the online service, which is the most important as well, because you can order from us anywhere in Nigeria and get it same day um, and any quantity in any volume. And we're, we're extremely price competitive, even to the informal market. You can keep coming. Um, but then we also offer a lot of wedding services, which is the biggest part. Um, so uh, you can see the experiences here. So with the wedding service, where we give you more than just drinks. You can get free products, you can get uh, free services and free gifts. And that's a lot of stuff that people can't offer you there in the industry. We're convenient, we're price sensitive, uh, but we also offer the, the, the most deals and, and the best deals, I can say that. Um, all the products are authentic, all of them. Um, we work with all the brands, so you get a lot of uh, partnerships with us as well. Now, um, look, if at the moment one of the biggest challenges that you have is if you're in Lagos and you're getting married in Ibadan, people tend to want to buy drinks in Lagos, then carry it to Ibadan or carry it to the east or carry it to wherever they're going. Now, with us, you don't need to do that. You can either order it online and ask for it to be delivered in various locations, which we can do for you. There's no need to carry the products here. So we're also the most convenient as well. And the prices are the same anywhere and everywhere in Nigeria. Wherever you are, it's the same price. Um, the price doesn't change, which is something that not pe many people do. You know, the reason why people buy drinks from Lagos and carry them to where they're going, because the assumption is it's the cheapest in Lagos. So they want to buy it there and take it to where they're going. But that's not true. We're the same everywhere and anywhere. The price is the same. So um, the offers are the same, the deals are the same. So it doesn't change with us. Um, so that's, that's one of the most unique things about us compared to other people.